Welcome to Without Bias. Apia, the go-to insurance for retirees. Call 13-50-50. Get set, go. Local legends want it. A bowls green is just up the road. Search bowls club near me. Welcome to Without Bias. Good to be with you for another week. Our weekly bowl show here on SEN. It's a pleasure to be with you here as part of the Sporting Capital. Jordan Canellis filling in once again tonight for Sam Hargraves. And uh, we're only a couple of days away now from the uh, Commonwealth Games. It gets underway in a, cu- in a matter of days. Two days from now, the Com Games. The bowls begins on Friday. So we're only a few days out from seeing our Jackaroos uh, competes out on the greens of Birmingham. We are here, Bowls uh, Without Bias, for Bowls Australia. Local legends wanted. Search Bowls Clubs near me. And brought to you by Apia as well, proudly supporting Bowls Australia. Uh, our first chat tonight, we go to one of the greats of Bowls in Australia, a former Jackaroo, thanks to Ride at Home, the official naming rights partner of the Australian Jackaroos. It is a pleasure to welcome Wayne Turley to the program this evening. Uh, Wayne, or Turles as you're known, uh, welcome to the show. How's things? Yeah, good. Thanks, Jordan. Uh, thanks for having me. It must be very exciting uh, this time among the Bowls community, the Com Games commencing this week. What memories does uh, the Com Games bring back for you? Yeah, um, lifetime memories. Yeah, I just uh, I can't wait for it to kick off in Birmingham in a couple of days' time. But um, yeah, I was lucky enough to compete at uh, Melbourne in 2006 and Delhi in 2010. And um, yeah, some memories I'll cherish for forever. It's exciting times for everyone um, that's about to take up the, uh, the and wear the green and gold at the Com Games. Absolutely. Yeah, you won gold in 2006 with uh, Mark Casey and Bill Cornell's in Melbourne. How fondly do you remember your experiences at Darabin? What stands out the most for you? Yeah, I think it's, uh, we're lucky enough it was a home Commonwealth Games. So uh, in Melbourne, um, I'm from Sydney. I was from Tarrant Point in Sydney, uh, Tarrant Point Bowls Club for many, many years. And um, knowing that my family and friends were just so close and were able to travel down and for a day and watch. And then once we got to the gold medal match, you know, um, uh, we, we dodged to get everywhere to get some tickets. And it was easier for them to travel down and, and get to the, to the final. But having my, all my family there um, was probably the biggest thing. And my friends for... Uh, to, that time that we won the gold medal, but um, there was a couple of times it looked a bit dicey even making the medal match, but um, yeah, some, some memories that will uh, will last me a lifetime. And then you backed up a couple of years later in Delhi as well, you got the silver, that would have been a much different experience I'm sure with the environment, so comparing Melbourne to to Delhi, but what stands out from when you were at, in India? Yeah, well, India was just um, a totally different experience, the village was different, um, the security at that time, there was conflict going around in different countries close to Delhi, and so you're just getting on buses with machine guns, you had tanks outside the village, the security was so high. Um, and the venue was just basically a tin shed and four huge carpet greens outside the main stadium. Um, so you're able to go in and watch the uh, athletes but come out. But four carpet greens yeah, weren't up to the highest standard. But yeah, well, Mark Casey and myself were trying to go for back-to-back gold medals, which would have been a first for any lawn bowler. Um, in Australia, and uh, unfortunately, we missed out on a tiebreaker against South Africa in the final uh, with Brett Wilkie. So um, it was it was it was uh, an experience, an experience, but um, still a silver medal. We were happy with it. Would have been fantastic to have two golds. Is uh, is Delhi the most unusual place that uh, Bowles has taken you in your career? Uh, yeah, Delhi. Yeah, it was that was. Um, I was lucky enough to play a um, played a Tri Nations event in South Africa uh, inside the Empress Palace Casino. They built a a, a rink and grandstands inside the casino. So um, we were there for like 10 days playing. Uh, there was Australian size, myself, Steve Glass and Kelvin, Kirko and Karen Murphy, and they had a Great Britain side and a South African side. So that was a pretty amazing setup. We never saw daylight for seven days stuck in a casino, <laughs> but um, the setup there was, yeah. But Delhi, yeah, definitely unusual, the heat. Um, you know, we'd leave the village at, say, 7 o'clock in the morning, get back at 10 o'clock at night. The surface temperature is about 56 degrees, and uh, just long days and heat and just make sure we're fit enough for the campaign. We've had a really good side. Lake Sylvie got silver medal, but um, yeah, it's still a great experience. The opening ceremony, the closing ceremony, and being around all the other Australian athletes. Some of your 2006 uh, Melbourne teammates are playing in Birmingham this year. Barry Lester and Lindsay Clark are part of the Jackaroos team again. How proud are you of those two in particular to still be competing at this level? Yeah, look, just, uh, look, look at Barry Lester. He's a, he's a fantastic ambassador for uh, on and off the green and what he's done for the game of bowls, you know, he, he played 2006. We was a bit of a surprise for him, um, and then you know missed out of here and there. And he's and he's just worked so hard, and um, he just deserves everything he gets from and in being over this time back in Birmingham. Um, I, I'm looking forward to watching Baz. Baz is uh, 
you know, he's a delight to watch on and off the green. He puts everything his heart and soul into it. And to Lindsay, uh, this is a fourth Commonwealth game. So um, we had a bit of a, she's a Tweet Heads uh, teammate, so we had a bit of a farewell for her. And I also got um, a, a good mate of mine, Damien Delgado, playing for a Tweet Heads member who's in the para team and a wheelchair athlete. So I'm really looking forward to watching all three of them uh, participate, along with all the other Jackaroos. How close are the uh, are the able bodied athletes to the para jackaroos uh, in in the com games, but also just year round in general? Yeah, they are. We've had, I've had some good conversations with Lindsay and Damien, and I mean, in particular, Damien asked how he felt when he did his uh, recent UK tour for selection trials, and how was it as a team of a uh, whole team of jackaroos? He said it was amazing. You know, he felt a little bit um, of putting it first. We said, "Oh, there's Aaron Wilson," but but he soon realised that they are one team, and um, and that's. Um, and it's all to do with the coaching staff, and particularly led by Gary Willis. He creates that team environment, the same as Steve Glasson uh, did as well. So, um, yeah, the Jackaroos have been lucky enough that, and it, and it went back to probably when I was there at 2006 um, with Cameron Curtis and Ian Schubach. It was all about the team. And I think those results that we had in 2006, I think it's still the most successful Commonwealth Games team um, with myself and then Kelvin Kirko and Lindsay and Karen and Wayne Gold, and I think um, seven out of the, nine out of ten won medals. So, yeah, just that, that one team um, which sinks right through the para. It's just, yeah, it's an amazing feeling. The intensity of the Com Games. We have some pretty prestigious events uh, down here in Australia, just among the Australian bowls community. We had the Oz Open not that long ago. Um, there are different international events over the year as well, but the Com Games in particular, once every four years, how intense and how, uh, how much, I guess, pressure in a way is uh, do you feel when you're competing in the Com Games? Yeah, there's a lot of pressure. I think um, because you work in the public eye more, uh, you know, it's televised throughout the whole, nearly throughout the whole world. So, yeah, you definitely the, you feel the pressure. You have got the opening ceremonies. You have got the extra elements that you wouldn't normally have if you go to a normal bowls event. So the Australian Open, it's just about going to a bowls club, the bowls club, and bowls. This time, you're in a village. You have the opening ceremony. Um, you got broadcast rules. You got all these social media rules. Everything that goes with it. So there's a lot of extra activity happens outside before you even get to start playing the game. Uh, I've got a fond memory of Mark Casey and myself in 2006. We were about to play our first game. We were over at the dining hall in the village. And as we've come out to go across to our, our room and get changed to get the bus, we got stopped. And we said, we're in a bit of a hurry. We need to cross the road. But um, it was the Queen coming through the village. <laughs> and we're standing there. And the Queen walked straight up to myself and Mark Casey and shook her hands. And she said, what sport are you participating in? And we said, lawn bowls. And she said, oh, unfortunately, I cannot make it out there to watch you today. All the best. And we were just dumb. Like, Case. <laughs> Case couldn't speak a word. He was, he was gob, gobsmacked. But we met the Queen. We ended a little bit late on the bus. We got on the bus, went down. We had to play uh, Kenya in our very first match. And Kenya, not really the most powerhouse mm-hmm. nation in bowls. But um, we'd won 27 matches, Billy, Mark, and myself, leading into that match. And then we got beat by Kenya. And we were absolutely devastated. Um, and on the back page of the paper had Royal Shock, bowlers beaten by, after meeting Queen, beaten by Kenya. And we just took it, um, yeah, that we were gone, really. But uh, thanks to the coaching and all the rest of the team got around us and picked us up and we went through and snuck through our um, matches um, to win a section, then quarterfinal, semifinal, final, end up winning a gold medal. But those little different things can be things that could affect your game, but lucky enough you've got the right coaching staff and people around you to pick you up. Looking ahead to this campaign now in Birmingham, the Jackaroos that are over there right now, who are the ones to watch out for you? Who's uh, who's going to be our biggest threats? Oh, I think all of them are threats. Um, it's it's, diff- it's going to be definitely um, difficult on those type of greens. Um, obviously, you've got the, the nations that play there the, uh, all the time, the English, and particularly the Scottish, you know, led by Alex Marshall and Paul Foster. But, um, you know, like we'll be well prepared. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Um, I've, uh, Corey Redlock's in is in the best form of his life. And then you've got how exciting it's going to watch Aaron Wilson be able to go back, hopefully go back to back and win a gold medal in the singles. And, and then the women's team, like Lindsay, she's been there before four times and Natasha and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to watch Ellen Ryan in the singles as well. So I think all the Jackaroos are a huge chance to win medals. Uh, Wayne, you're working at Club Tweeds and you have a couple of massive events coming up, including the Australian Indoors, which will be just after the Games. Uh, one of the biggest indoor events that you guys will have had, a good field it looks like as well. How excited are you as part of Club Tweed to have that tournament back? Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, with the COVID and the border restrictions, it's been this is three years now since we've had it, so we're really excited. Uh, double the field, last year's qualifiers and this year's qualifiers. So five days, uh, last two days televised, uh, 
the home of the indoor. I think he's been going for 20, 28 years now, and um, we're really looking forward to getting him on back here and, and showcasing Club Tweed, and then followed by the Golden Nugget at the end of August. Yes, that's uh, that's the next. That was cancelled as well last year, wasn't it? Yeah, it's been cancelled last two years. Um, two. Junior Nugget and the Golden Nugget. So we're looking forward to on the twenty seventh, twenty eighth of August, uh, the Junior Nugget. And then uh, the 29th of August through to Thursday, the 1st of September, the Golden Nugget, where we have uh, 12, 12 guys, 12 women, um, yeah, back getting the, the 34th Golden Nugget back on the greens and back showcasing Club to eat. Excellent stuff, Wayne. It's been a pleasure talking to you on the program this evening. Enjoy the Com Games and uh, what we're about to watch in a couple of days from now. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks for your time. Wayne Turley with us, former Jackaroo here on Without Bias. Local Legends Wanted, a bowls green is just up the road. Search bowls clubs near me. And for APO, the go-to insurance for retirees, call 135050, get set, go. On the other side of this, more from Without Bias. We'll have a chat to Jamie Lee Warsnop. Uh, she's up next. This is Without Bias. APIA, the go-to insurance for retirees. Call 135050, get set, go. Local legends wanted. A bowls green is just up the road. Search bowls club near me. Welcome back to Without Bias. Jordan Canellas with you, filling in for Sam Hargraves this week on the program, our weekly show covering off on all things bowls. Good to be in your company tonight. Local legends wanted. Search bowls clubs near me and brought to you by Apia, proudly supporting Bowls Australia. Not far away now from the Commonwealth Games, as we've been mentioning on the program throughout tonight. And it's a very exciting time in the world of Australian sport, Commonwealth Games, but also for the bowls community as well, the, the pinnacle of their sport. It is a pleasure to have on the program part of the emerging Jackaroo setup and also the partner of Aaron Wilson uh, here for Right at Home, the official naming rights partner of the Australian Jackaroos. Our guest tonight is Jamie Lee Warsnop. Jamie, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us on the show. How excited are you to see Aaron back at the Commonwealth Games? Yeah, I'm very excited that Aaron has been given the opportunity to compete in his second Commonwealth Games. Um, I think it's a massive achievement itself to be selected again for the second time. And I can't wait for the games to start. It's a bit disappointing we get we can't get to go there and watch him, but we'll definitely be cheering on from back home. Did you uh, did you expect him to be picked for the team? Um, uh, as a, the Jack Roo squad, it's a good solid 10 in the squad. So I think, yeah, it's a lot of hard work and preparation he's got selected. But yeah, there's a lot of talented players in there. How proud are you of what he's been able to achieve and get back to yet another Games? Yeah, I'm beyond proud of Aaron. The past the past four years have been really tough with COVID and restrictions. Um, but Aaron being the resilient person he has, he is. He's able to put his best foot forward, train hard. And I think he's found a new passion for the game as well now. So he's definitely inspiring to many people. His form uh, recently has been really good. Uh, especially on the slower greens at the Trans Tasman not long ago, uh, how confident was he ahead of his flight over there to uh, to Birmingham? Um, I think there's always going to be a bit of nerves around going over and putting on the green and gold and playing for your country, but he's definitely put in the hard work and prepare and um, prepared for the game. He's been focusing on his fitness and mental preparation and spent a lot of time on the slow green. He always says to me, preparation is key, so um, he's certainly done that for this Com Games and. Yeah, I think he's definitely going to put um, his best foot forward and give 110%. Now, being part of the emerging Jackaroo setup yourself, uh, Jamie Lee, you know um, how difficult it might be really to adjust to playing on uh, on slower greens. What's uh, What kind of work has had to go into to Aaron and uh, the rest of the Jackaroos team to learn how to acclimatise to what they might expect over in Birmingham? Yeah, so we went over to the UK in May, I think it was, um, and we had preparation over there on the slow greens. So we got an idea of how slow they'll be, et cetera. So coming back home for Aaron personally, I know he went down to one of the local clubs, which the greens were, they weren't really maintained. So they were really, really slow. So he was just practicing on them, using the bowls that he was going to be using over at the Com Games. <clears throat> um, and uh, part of the Jackaroo squad, you know, they've played the Trans-Tasman. They've had several matches um, in preparation on the slow greens and preparing for the Com Games. So I think their preparation they've done as a team and individually is amazing. What kind of things as a uh, as a bowler do you have to actually work on when playing on slower greens? Technique wise, what do you how do you try and overcome the, the slower surfaces? So I know I went over the UK, my technique and my delivery changed completely. So you've kind of got to get out of the mindset that it's not quick, it's actually slow. So you've got to kind of put all your body 
your body strength into your delivery, I found. So um, you've got to, it's a mentally, mentally tough, um, which I would say is probably the hardest thing because you're always going back to Australian greens and you're always thinking about, you know, I've, you don't really think about the eight seconds. So I think you've got to drill that into your head a lot that it's, you know, eight seconds and it is slow. Mm. So you sort of can't forget that. Does it feel unnatural? Uh, for me, it did. Yeah, I found very unnatural. So it took me, um, personally, I was practicing a fair bit, just trying to get that delivery and try and change it. And then when we did come back to the Australian Greens, it was like I hadn't put down a bowl before because it was so different. So trying to acclimatise back to Australian surfaces. That Yeah, that was especially hard, I found, yeah. <laughs> the That tour that you went uh, on to, uh, uh, to the UK in May on the... Uh, the Leamington Spa Greens, that was uh, extra special for you because you made your international debut. What was it like receiving your first cap? Um, it was definitely a, a moment I will cherish and remember for the rest of my life. It was such a special and amazing honour to be able to represent your country. And it was more special. I received my cap from a good friend of mine, Dawn Heyman. She's also in the Jackaroo squad. And of course, I was able to share this special moment with Aaron, who's obviously been my biggest supporter and motivator in life. So knowing that all the hard work and the dedication I've had over the past uh, 15 years has paid off. It was really, really special. What, uh, for you, how, what, what has, what's the pathway like for, uh, for someone like yourself coming up through the emerging Jackaroos and then receiving your first cap? What was uh, sort of the steps that you, you were taking in, the, in the, the years leading up, knowing that you were getting a little bit closer? So I think just leading up to it, um, I've always played you know I've played skate for a few years now and I was in the emerging jackaroos a fair few years ago um and then I finally got back into the jackaroos squad emerging jackaroos squad and I was just kind of playing in as much bowls as I can I also work as well outside of bowls so just trying to play in as much as I can and win as much as I can and play good bowls um I think that was my biggest thing you know even if I did lose as long as I was playing good and I was consistent I was always happy with how I was going so my thing was in the end was just have fun, play bowls and see how you go and that kind of got me to where I am now, I guess. What have you learned the most about being in the in the high performance setup? So I think I've learned a lot as a person and as an athlete. So um, I think it's I've learned that it's always important to believe in yourself. Um, you don't get to represent your country overnight. So it does take a lot of hard work, dedication, persistence and self belief to be able to do that. And the HP performance has so many wonderful resources which assist with all aspects of life and helps follow your dreams and become the best bowler you can be. So they're really supportive in, you know, bowls and playing to your best you can. Was there an aspect of the high performance setup that you didn't quite uh, anticipate seeing? Was there maybe a, a sports science element or a, or a technology uh, element that you didn't quite anticipate but you've, you've had to learn to, to deal with now for the better? Um. Oh, yes and no. Like they've, I think they're focusing a lot now on your personal life as well as professionally as an athlete. So we have some finance Zoom meetings, which is all about finance. Um, there's stuff about, you know, it's just if you're ed- educational studies. So I know there's a few athletes who've been getting, um, I think it's an educational grant or scholarships within universities because of their high performance level. So I think all that is so good for the younger generation up and coming that it's you know, it's still possible to chase your dreams outside of bowls, but also a part of bowls. Um, so it hasn't really surprised me. I just think it's a great new thing that, you know, Bowls Australia have incorporated and they're made, it's made known now. And now for the Com Games coming up. So we spoke about uh, Aaron uh, before, your partner, but uh, for the uh, for the, the contest in general and the, uh, the, uh, the challenge that the Jackaroos will face in Birmingham. Who are the opponents that you're keeping an eye on that you think will give Australia their biggest shake-up? Um, I think England, the home the home team, will definitely be hard to beat. But I think Australia have definitely put in... I think they've prepared the most as a team and as a whole, as well as individually. But they've done a lot of preparation. They've been over there for a couple of weeks now and preparing and they're on the greens. They're having... Um, team bonding activities, so they're preparing to the best they can. So I think England will be definitely hard to beat, but I'm back in Australia all the way. How do you plan on keeping contact with Aaron? Is it going to be a FaceTime or Zoom meetings while he's over there? Yeah, so we've been doing a fair few FaceTimes. We've got a little daughter, Summer, who's seven months old. 
So we've been FaceTiming a fair bit just so, you know, she gets to chat to dad and um, still see him. But it's definitely hard being so far away. How is little Summer going as well? Yeah, she's great. She's definitely missing the dad, but um, she's got her first tooth coming through now. So she's, yeah, she's going really good. Big milestone. (laughs) It Uh, is, yeah. Jamie, uh, it's been a, a pleasure having you on the program tonight. Um, I hope you uh, good luck for everything that comes your way as well through uh, through the bowls and uh, and also uh, send on our best to uh, to Aaron before he gets to compete over there in Birmingham in a couple of days. Thank you so much for being on the show tonight. Thanks for having me. Jamie Lee War's not being uh, here on the uh, on the program, uh, being one of our special guests on the show tonight. Uh, one of the emerging jackaroos, the right care, right at home. Local legends wanted. A bowl screen is just up the road. Search bowls clubs near me. And without bias, brought to you by APR, the go to insurance for retirees. Call 13 50 50. Get set, go. That's been our program tonight. Don't forget, you can podcast the show. Just search for Without Bias uh, online and on your podcast stores, wherever you get your podcasts. That's it for us tonight. We'll be back again with more from Without Bias uh, over the next coming weeks. And, of course, SEN will be covering the Commonwealth Games, so you can keep up with our Bowls team, the Jackaroos, over there in Birmingham. That's it for the show tonight. Catch you later.